one of the basic concepts for math is being able to put numbers in order. And a way you can think about putting numbers in order is using a number line. And typically, when you learn the number line as a younger student, you have a horizontal number line. And you start out with zero in the middle. And you go negatives to the left and positives to the right. Um, if I were to have taught you the number lines the first time, I would have also made sure that you were introduced to a vertical number line, again with zero in the middle. And negative numbers going down, positive numbers going up. On number lines, smaller numbers are to the left or below, quote unquote, bigger numbers. So smaller numbers are at the bottom here, and bigger numbers are at the top. Smaller numbers are at the left. Bigger numbers are on the right. The basic concept for figuring out how to order numbers if A and B are real and B minus A is positive, and A is not equal to zero, then A is less than B, or it's smaller than B. So if you get a positive number by subtraction, okay, then A is smaller. The reason why I put this A not equal to zero here is if I get a negative number by subtraction, A is bigger than B as long as A is not equal to zero. Okay, so I put that in there even though it's not required for the positive idea. But if, if you get a negative number here, you cannot say that A is bigger than B because A could possibly be zero and still end up with a negative number with subtraction. Okay? So if I do subtraction and get a positive number, then the number I subtracted from the um, other number is going to be the smaller number. Okay? There are various ways that we can um, show the ordering of real numbers. Okay? First one is with an inequality. Okay, and if you're taking your notes, make sure you leave space to the right because we're going to add two other columns to the right here. I can have um, various representations. I can say A is less than B. Okay, I can say A is less than or equal to B. A is greater than B, or A is greater than or equal to B. These are inequalities, and if I add the equal sign, I get the equality portion in there, which means they are the same number. That means A 
is to the left of B, okay, on the number line. So if I draw my number line and I pick the number B here, A is any number to the left. There. Notice I used like a round parentheses there. That means it can be any number up to but not including the B. Okay. Another way you may see this is you may see on your number line, you may see an open circle and an arrow to the left. Less than or equal to B. Instead of using the rounded parentheses type bracket, I'm going to use a square bracket with the arrow pointing to the left. Alternatively, you can see a solid dot and go here to the left. Next one. It says A is greater than B. It's going to be the parentheses type bracket with an arrow to the right. So that's A. And similarly to the second example here, if I have B and it's greater than or equal to, I will use a square bracket at the B point, point the arrow to the right. Just like the top two, this one be represented by a, a hole with the arrow to the right, this one with a solid dot with the arrow to the right. So need to be able to figure out where numbers are on the number line, be able to put numbers in order, um, be able to draw the inequalities. Okay, those inequalities were based off of just having single numbers that you were comparing. Well, you learned in seventh and eighth grade that I can pick a letter to represent a number and call it a variable. And I'm going to, and that's like kind of what I'm doing with this A and B. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a third number in between those um, A's and B's. And what we're going to do is we're going to come up with what is called interval notation. Okay, I've already done the first um, four. Okay, so I have the first four, and these are called unbounded intervals. Okay, and one way, um, so I can represent it this way, I can represent it on the number line, but the way you're going to see it um, more and more in math classes is what is our interval notation. And this one would say that A goes from negative infinity up to B. And I use round parentheses because I can never get to negative infinity, which is all the way over here to the left, and I never touch B. Here, a goes from negative infinity to B, but it touches B. So I use a square bracket. Notice that the brackets I use are the same as the brackets that I use on the number line. Here I would start at B and go to infinity. And here I would start at B touching it, going to infinity. The last type of interval that I have for an unbounded interval is negative infinity is less than x, which is less than infinity. It is the whole real number line. So basically, it's anything on the number line. 
and you represent it in interval notation as negative infinity, comma infinity. In this class, if I'm asking you to provide an interval that is all real numbers, I will allow you to use the abbreviation ARN to stand for all real numbers. So I've shown you unbounded intervals, and if I have unbounded intervals, I also need to talk about um, bounded intervals. So I'm going to make another table like this with the possibilities for bounded intervals, show the inequality um, of u on a number line, and give you the interval notation. So my inequality so first one is a is less than or equal to x which is less than or equal to b on the number line I have two numbers a and b and the number I want x is somewhere in between A and B inclusive. So I use the square brackets. And in my interval notation, I would also use the square brackets. Big thing to note, interval notation, smaller number to the left, bigger number to the right. This is an example of a closed interval because it's closed on both ends. You can also see it, you'll see two solid dots sometimes in textbooks like that. The next um, bounded, let me put bounded up here for you, is A is less than X, which is less than B at my two numbers, A and B, okay, my X is anything between A and B, but not A or B at all, so I use my round parentheses, type bracket again, alternatively it would be the whole on both sides, where my x is represented by that line. My interval notation would be a comma b. This is called an open interval. And my last two examples for ordering real numbers are partially open, partially closed. So the first one, I'll have it closed on the left. And on the last one, I will have it closed on the right. So if it's got an equal sign as part of the inequality, you use a square bracket, which gets mimicked over here. If it doesn't have an equal sign, it's a round bracket. which gets mimicked over here. Round bracket, square bracket. And I will, again, solid dot where there's, where it can touch, hole where it can't touch hole where it can't touch, and solid dot where it can touch. So what I've shown you is how to determine whether one number is smaller than a number. You do subtraction, and if you do subtraction and the number is positive, the number you subtracted is smaller than the other number. I showed you how to order numbers on a number line. You put the numbers that are smaller to the left or below, the number is bigger to the right 
or above on our number lines. And I showed you how to represent ordering of numbers um, using inequalities, number lines, and interval notation for both bounded and unbounded inequalities. Okay. For me, by the time you get to Algebra 2, the interval notation is the preferred method, and it'll be the only method that'll be allowed by the second semester of Algebra 2. Um, Algebra 1, inequality notation is acceptable, but again, try to get to the interval notation. And in eighth grade math, um, we're going to start, in eighth grade math, we start showing all of them at different times. But again, the most commonly used one in math beyond Algebra 1 is the interval notation.